Hi everyone! As you can tell from the creepy little face staring back at you, we have another G-Made kit in the studio. And looking from the sticker in the corner, this is the R1 Rock Buggy. So one interesting thing about this is the R1 is a very old kit, and it's a kit that's been around for a very long time. But interesting enough, it's packaged in this newer box. So it does seem like G-Made is going with this box style for all of their kits and just um, putting different stickers on it. I guess it saves them some money, also kind of gives a more premium look to their kits, I guess. Um, it, it did used to have a different packaging because the R1, if you don't know, is a very, very old kit. Here we have a picture of it here. It's a very, very old kit, um, back from like the GS01. Um, Sawback and like original SEX 10 days. It's, it's just a really old kit, but one that has a cult following nevertheless. So opening it up, you can see the original box used to be much smaller than this big bigger box. Of course, this bigger box is meant for um, housing like the big truck bodies and stuff, but because it doesn't have that, it doesn't really need all that space, all that much space. And it does look like all the parts kind of got. Um, around in here. So, since it's already been thrown around, let's just dump it all out and see what it looks like all installed. So here we have the R1 completed, assembled, painted and everything. Um, so I'll go over some build notes, some issues with the buggy, um, some other upgrades and things I'm gonna do to it in the future and then we'll take it on a quick little run to see how it runs and um, get to some final thoughts. So overall it was a really quick build, pretty easy. Um, the most intimidating part for a lot of people would probably be, be the cage but when you actually get to it the cage is honestly the easiest part of the build because this side and that side they're fully put together and you literally just put together the sides with a bunch of metal cross members down the middle. So it's super easy to build. The axles were also pretty easy to build. Follow the instructions carefully and it should be pretty easy to put together. So I think if I was really focused on it and was exclusively just focused focus on the build, I could have probably got this thing done in maybe two and a half or three hours. So Really easy build, really quick build, so that was a lot of fun. But as you're mounting electronics and stuff to it, you have to note that the cage is very, very small. So it, it, it is a little bit difficult to find places to mount your electronics and your battery and stuff. You are supposed to just mount it here on this electronics tray down here. But if you wanna do any sort of interior or any sort of driver figure or anything like that, you don't really want those to be visible. So I did my mount mine under the hood here. I just double stick taped them directly to the uh, the hood body panel and just stuck it down there. And then the receiver I stuck down on the underside of the electronics tray just to kind of hide it a little bit better as well. The battery will still kind of sit on top of here in the back so that will still be visible. It literally just kind of that's basically how it's gonna fit in there. So if like scale looks and stuff is something that that's really important to you, it might be kind of difficult to achieve with the R1. But if you can achieve it, I think it, it will definitely be worth it because it is a very cool looking um, crawler in my opinion. But just to give you kind of a reference of how small the cage is, that's a mini T which is an 18 scale vehicle, so pretty pretty small. Um, alternative, or alternatively, um, you can just mount the stuff where they want to go, and then if you have a body you want to put on it, they actually do include body posts you can put on here instead of these panels. And if you do that, you can just like mount a regular truck body on it, like that. Or like this, 
Um, so that is an option for you if, if, um, if you like the look of that better. But I personally really like the look of the page, so I'm probably going to just leave it like this for now. Um, the links. The links are metal, which is nice, but the geometry on it, unfortunately, like a, a lot of the early G-Made stuff, um, the links geometry is kind of trash. So you can see the lower links are parallel. And then it's also mounted the outside, so that gets caught up on rocks and stuff. But more than that, the, the main issue with the, the triangulate, no, the, the lack of triangulation on the lower links is the, it makes the axles not very solidly mounted. So you can see it kind of swings back and forth like this. And then when it articulates, the axles also aren't centered, centered and then we'll sweep left and right like that as well, which is not ideal. But I did want to see how this thing would perform with the stock setup nevertheless. So that's why I kept it like that for right now. The axles on the, the uh, bearing cups for the diff, um, the, the spool in the middle, are plastic, which I wasn't a fan of. So I did pick up the aluminum versions. So I'll be throwing that on. And while I'm doing that, I'll also throw on the brass axle weights just to give a little bit more weight down to the axles. But because the, the tube chassis is pretty light, it already has a pretty low center of gravity. I also did weight the wheels with some um, kind of wheel weights. So that does also lower the center of gravity significantly. So that's, that's nice. Speaking of the wheels, they are beadlocks, they're sealed beadlocks. So that makes the tires a little bit bouncy. So I did go ahead and vent the tires. Um, I do run my vehicles a little bit in water and stuff like that, so if it was a 1.9 tire, I would have probably just left it just sealed, but because they're really big 2.2, that makes the truck very bouncy. So I vented the tire, so if water does get in there inevitably, it'd be easier for it to come out. So that's what I ended up doing with that. The tires are the G-Made um, Bighorn 2.2 tires. They're, you could get better tires, but honestly for a kit stock tire, they're really nice and do work pretty well. I do have them mounted backwards just because they work a little bit better that way. Um, but overall, I think these are going to be decent tires. The shocks are the G transition shocks. The ones you'll get in the kit are normally red. I stole these off of my G-Made Komodo, which are the same shocks, just they're black with the light blue um, little bushings in there to think went better with my color scheme. I have mine set up in the droop setup, so for the lower center of gravity. You can also set it up with the sprung setup for higher center of gravity, kind of depending on what kind of driving you want to do with it. Um, but they, like, like you saw, it still has a lot of travel. So that is pretty cool. As far as electronics go, I'm running the Hobbywing um, 1060, I believe, ESC. Um, it's basically what I run on all, all of my crawlers. Just a little Mabuchi 25 turn, a 27 turn Mabuchi motor. Um, with, and I'm running it on my Fly Sky radio. So, pretty basic electronic setup. I originally wanted to use this fancy 5 pole motor 17 turn, but as you will see later in the driving videos, the uh, gearing on this is a little bit high because G-Man actually was marketing this to compete with the Wraith. So the gearing is set up a little bit high. So 17 turn made it a little bit too fast. So kind of went down to a 25 turn and 27 turn. I might end up actually going even lower with that and going with the 35 turn motor. Just because I'm mostly just going to be crawling with this, not really doing any rock racer kind of stuff with it. So um, that's for the future. These lights are also not included out of the box. Those are also upgrade parts. And the interesting thing about the light kit is I've never seen this before, but when you get it, they don't include the lights assembled. 
they literally just give it to you unassembled like this with the resistors and stuff so you have to solder that together yourself which if you don't know how to solder or how to put together a light kit that's a little bit annoying and they don't give you any instructions or anything no wiring diagrams so they just kind of throw, throw that in there and be like figure it out but if you do get it the housings are aluminum and kind of nice so might be worth um, getting just for that if you want as far as some of the other upgrades um, I do have this front axle guard with axle guard for the front that will kind of protect the steering links I have the CVA axles and then the brass weights that I showed you so, oh, and then as far as the battery, I'm running for it. I'm running this little tiny LiPo 2S battery that I originally got for my Lunchbox Mini. Um, so this hasn't seen a lot of use, but finally good to have something to use that battery on. But, with that all said, a lot of words have been exchanged here. Let's finally go out and see how this thing runs, and then get to, the, get to um, some final thoughts.
So as you saw in the video, even with this stock link setup, for the most part, it did pretty well. Um, it did end up getting caught up on some rocks sometimes, but, uh, and as I predicted, they do hang up here a little bit. But for the most part, it did pretty well. The tires actually also performed much, much better than I expected. Um, everyone was pretty kind of, kind of telling me that each stock tires aren't very good, but honestly, I think they're decent tires. I'll still probably end up getting some different tires for it anyway, but for a box stock tire, I was pretty happy with it. And with just a simple like wheel weights in it, it just crawled like an absolute monster. Um, crawled over everything that I put put it through pretty easily for the most part. The links did make it a little bit hard to keep a line if you were trying to get some really precise line going. So that's something definitely to improve later. But for the most part, I'm pretty happy with how the, how the build went, how it looks, how it drove. So pretty excited to get working on this a little bit more. I'll probably release videos of some, I'm testing some of the upgrades I put on it later, so it's kind of similar to my sawback. So if you guys are interested in that, you can check that out when those come out. But until then, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys found it informative, entertaining. If I missed anything and you, want, you have any questions, leave it down in the comments um, and then I'll try to answer it as soon as possible. But as always, I hope you have a great day and have fun with RC.